We're at the Biostock Investor Meeting, and I'm joined by CEO of Sereno Scientific, Sten Sorensen. Welcome, Sten. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, could you briefly describe Sereno for those who aren't familiar with the company? Well, Sereno is a clinical stage pioneering uh, biotech company with a vision to change uh, therapy for the better for patients in cardiovascular disease. And we have three products in the pipeline, uh, one in phase two and two in preclinical. And um, uh, we listed the company in 2016 and are in a phase two program in a rare disease in the US, mm -hmm. pulmonary arterial hypertension. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned the fact that uh, cardiovascular disease, it's, it's a huge issue, of course. Uh, but why are the mainstream uh, CBD treatments not good enough right now? Um, I think uh, this is a continuous development, actually. Uh, I've been in the field since uh, the uh, mid-80s. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and I've started two survival trials with uh, older drugs, but using them a different way and improved survival with more than 30% in heart failure patients, one with the Monsanto and one with AstraZeneca. And when we initiated those and defined that opportunity, nobody in the room was talking about that. The American Congress of Cardiology with 3,000 people talking about the current drugs and the current new drugs. So I think uh, discoveries are there to be made. Mm -hmm. You just have to see them mm -hmm. and be able to then uh, create followers and finance and, and uh, competence and capacity to get it done. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can, you can falter and the science can falter, etc. Et but I think this will continue to be developed. At that time, heart failure drugs were using maybe a couple of drugs. And now they're using up to five drugs in parallel mm -hmm. to help the, the patients. And uh, currently, in our indication for our lead program, uh, one or two drugs are used initially, and they're basically old-time vasodilators. Mm -hmm. And now there's a cry out to create, to develop and and uh, deliver uh, disease-modifying agents, mm -hmm. uh, drugs that can not only lower the pulmonary pressure but actually have an impact on the disease progression and potentially reverse it. So. The more we move on and learn about science and the diseases, the more we can apply, uh, apply these, this knowledge to new agents yeah. or old agents. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, you mentioned your lead candidate, CS1, in, uh, um, in PA, <laughs> permanent pulmonary arterial hypertension. Uh, what is PA exactly, and uh, why are you focusing on this uh, disease specifically? Well, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension is a fatal disease. Uh, the life expectancy is uh, short. It has been improved, but it's, it's similar to cancer forms. Mm -hmm. It uh, hits uh, mostly uh, females uh, and uh, at a certain age, older age, but even younger uh, females and males are, are hit by this. Mm -hmm. And it's a progressive restructuring of the uh, pulmonary uh, vascular tree with increased pressures that eventually causes the right heart uh, to fail. Mm -hmm. And it, there's nothing more than a transplantation you can do, and very rarely that happens. So you actually die then of the disease. And it has many components, such as uh, vascular remodeling, fibrosis, inflammation, high pulmonary pressure, and also microthrombosis. Mm -hmm. And what's so exciting about our new uh, program here is that we have an HDAC inhibitor. We are first uh, globally to embark on a clinical program with HDAC inhibitor for cardiovascular disease. And that's an epigenetic modulation drug, have we discovered. And it has been documented in preclinical work that it has all of these capacities that I mentioned that are driving the disease towards uh, mortality, actually. So it has documented impact on inflammation, uh, fibrosis, uh, pulmonary pressure reduction, and thrombosis prevention. Mm -hmm. So when we have defined what, where to go with this new cardiovascular drug mm -hmm. development, we, we found PH to be the most um, applicable uh, first indication for this drug. And our principal investigators, a thought leader in the field, has 
uh, quoted that this could be a game changer in, in the, the therapy for these patients. Mm-hmm. So we're not alone about this is hope that we can do something good for these patients. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, you're currently collaborating with the University of Michigan uh, regarding the development of two preclinical candidates. Uh, what do you hope to get out of this collaboration? That's, yeah, actually, so we are, what we are doing is uh, we are pursuing an industry-sponsored collaborative uh, agreement uh, together in partnership with University of Michigan. And we have a, uh, our director of translational research, Mike Hollinstadt, is uh, guiding these programs under the supervision and in dialogue with our team uh, in Gothenburg and elsewhere. So, and in these programs, we have two preclinical assets. One is actually uh, the inventor is Mike Hollinstadt and his partner, uh, Andy White, who is former Pfizer and mm-hmm. was one of the people behind Lipitor once the biggest seller in the world for uh, high lipids. So that's an IP receptor agonist, and he has very exciting research behind this. So he's found a, an endogenic uh, uh, lipid that has a direct impact on the IP receptor, and he's made an analog of that, and that's mm-hmm. the drug, that's CS585. And it's very specific to this receptor, very potent and very stable. And he just presented this data uh, at uh, European uh, EHA in, um, in uh, Vienna, I think it was, in June, where he had documented that you could prevent thrombosis without causing bleed with this agent. Mm-hmm. And th- that's very interesting. So that's one of the programs. So we have acquired the uh, first option to, to um, sign a global development and a commercial agreement Uh, with University of Michigan uh, prior to us uh, pursuing this collaboration with this asset. Mm -hmm. The other asset is our own, which we actually acquired from a a group at AstraZeneca, which were behind the follower of Losic, once the the drug that was selling most prior to Libitor, actually. (laughs) So this group, Emeriti, uh, former Astra chemists and doctors and researchers, they came to us with an idea of a novel HDAC inhibitor. Mm -hmm. So we acquired that and we are developing that. And that uh, compound has also shown that it can prevent thrombosis without causing bleed. Mm -hmm. And that was presented two weeks ago at European Society of Cardiology. And Mm -hmm. I showed earlier today um, these two programs and what they have done and why it's so exciting. This is a, a dramatic uh, medical need in the population, very large population that are given anticoagulants and antiplatelets that cause bleeding risk. Sure. And finally, where do you see Sereno Scientific a year from now? Well, a year from now, we should have completed our, uh, our phase two uh, trial, uh, which we do in collaboration with Abbott. Uh, we have a target top line uh, data uh, Q1 next year. Mm -hmm. And um, by next year, we should also have uh, submitted our INDs for the two preclinical programs. And we should then be on our way with three clinical programs uh, during 2024, the following year. Yeah, great. Well, looking forward to next year then and (laughs) and seeing how Sereno progresses. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. (laughs)